Good morning, everybody. I'm Brother Joe, and welcome to Morning Prayer on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in the Edgewater neighborhood of Chicago, Illinois, this Monday in the fourth week after Pentecost. Um, welcome to Google Meet. For now, we just ask participants to mute their um, microphones. It's up to you whether you want to mute your video. Um, on the very, if you're using a computer, on the very lower right hand uh, corner of the screen, there's a little bubble. And if you click on that, you can get to in call messages. And that's important when we get to the prayer section toward the end of morning prayer. If you want to add prayers that we don't already have, it's our custom to light candles um, in order to signify God's presence. And I'm going to do that now. We follow the um, structure of prayer of the Brotherhood of St. Gregory Daily Office app. You can put dailyoffice.app in your computer, your phone, or in your tablet. Um, but if you're using a prayer book at home, I'm going to give you some page numbers now. Um, morning prayer begins on page 80 of the prayer book, uh, followed by the Vanity on page 82. The psalm today is going to be a portion of Psalm 119, starting on page 772 of the prayer book. Verses 105 through 144. So page or Psalm 119, page 772, verses 105 through 114. Canticles today will be 9 and 19. Canticle 9 is on page 86 of the prayer book, and Canticle 19 on page 94 of the prayer book. At the end, um, well, we're going to do the general Thanksgiving. Um, if you go into the daily the the daily office app that's one thing you can turn on the the general thanksgiving you can turn that on you can turn on the the um the traditional lord's prayer and the 30-day psalm cycle we have a commemoration today for isabel florence hapgood an ecumenist and the year they put on there is 1928 so I'm, before we begin i'm going to actually read the um the hagiography Isabel Hapgood, a lifelong and faithful Episcopalian, was a force behind ecumenical relations between the Episcopal Church and Russian Orthodoxy in the United States around the turn of the 20th century. Born in Massachusetts on November 21st, 1851, Hapgood was a superior student with a particular talent for the study of languages. In addition to the standard fare of the time, Latin and French, she also mastered, ma mastered most of the Romance and Germanic languages of Europe, as well as Russian, Polish, and Church Slavonic. She possessed the particular gift of being able to translate the sub subtleties of Russian into equally nuanced English. Her translations made the works of Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Gorky, and Chekhov, among uh, uh, others, available to English re readers. From 1887 to 1889, Hapgood traveled extensively in Russia, cementing her lifelong love of Russia, its language and culture, and particularly the Russian Orthodox Church. She would make return visits to Russia almost every year for the rest of her life. Her love of Russian Orthodoxy and its divine liturgy led her to seek the permission of the hierarchy to trans the right translate the rites into English. Hapgood's already established reputation as a sensitive translator certainly contributed, but in the meantime, she had developed close relationships with Russian clergy and musicians at all levels. The work, Service Book of the Holy Orthodox Catholic Church, took 11 years to complete. It received support of the Russian Orthodox bishops in North America, particularly Archbishop Tikhon, who was later to give Hapgood's work a second blessing when he became Patriarch, Patriarch of Moscow. Isabel Florence Hapgood is faithfully remembered among Russian Orthodox Christians in North America for her contribution to their common life. Her desire for closer relations between the Orthodox and Anglican Christians and for making the liturgical treasures of their tradition available to the English speaking world. She died on June 26, 1928. So we'll take a moment here. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. 
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. We'll pray together Psalm portion of Psalm 119, starting on page 772 of their prayer book. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. I hate those who have a divided heart, but your law do I love. You are my shield, you are my refuge and shield. My hope is in your word. Away from me, you wicked. I will keep the commandments of my God. Sustain me according to your promise that I may live. And let me not be disappointed in my hope. Hold me up and I shall be safe. And my delight shall be ever in your statutes. You spurn all who stray from your statutes. Their deceitfulness is in vain. In your sight, all the wicked of the earth are but dross. Therefore, I love your decrees. My flesh trembles with dread of you. I am afraid of your judgments. I have done what is just and right. Do not deliver me to my oppressors. Be surety for your servants good. Let not the proud oppress me. My eyes have failed from watching for your salvation and for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your loving kindness and teach me your statutes. I am your servant, grant me understanding that I may know your decrees. It is time for you to act, O Lord, for they have broken your law. Truly, I love your commandments more than gold and precious stones. I hold all your commandments to be right for me. All paths of falsehood I abhor. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I ob obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pant. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy, as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me, and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant, and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. You are righteous, O Lord, and upright are your judgments. You have issued your decrees with justice and in perfect faithfulness. My indignation has consumed me because my enemies forget your words. 
your word has been tested to the uttermost and your servant holds it dear. I am small and of little account, yet I do not forget your commandments. Your justice is an everlasting justice, and your law is the truth. Trouble and distress have come upon me, yet your commandments are my delight. The righteousness of your decrees is everlasting, Grant me understanding that I may live. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. When the Philistines captured the Ark of God, they brought it from Ebenezer to Ash Ashdod and then the Philistines took the ark of God and brought it into the house of Dagon and placed it beside Dagon. When the people of Ashdod rose early the next day, there was Dagon fallen, fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. So they took Dagon and put him back in his place. But when they rose early on the next morning, Dagon had fallen on his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. The head of Dagon and both his hands were lying cut off upon the threshold only the trunk of Dagon was left to him, was left to him. This is why the priests of Dagon and all who enter the house of Dagon do not step on the threshold of Dagon in Ashdod to this day. The hand of the Lord was heavy upon the people of Ashdod, and he terrified and struck them with tumors, both in Ashdod and in its territory. And when the inhabitants of Ashdod saw how things were, they said, the ark of God and the... and the ark, the ark of God of Israel must not remain with us, for his hand is heavy, heavy on us and our God, Dagon. So they sent and gathered all together. They gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, what shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? The inhabitants of Gath replied, let the ark of God be moved on to us. So they moved the ark of God of Israel to Gath. But after they had brought it to Gath, the hand of the Lord was against the city, causing a very great panic. He struck the inhabitants of the city, both young and old, so that tumors broke out on them. So they sent the ark of God, the ark of the God of Israel to Ekron. But when the ark of God came to Ekron, the people of Ekron cried out, Why have you brought around to us the ark of the God of Israel to kill us and our people? They sent, therefore, and gathered together all the lords of the Philistines and said, Send away the ark of the God of Israel and let it return to its own place, that it may not kill us and our people. For there was a deathly panic throughout the whole city. The hand of God was very heavy there. Those who did not die were stricken with tumors, and the cry of the city went up to heaven. Here ends the reading. Together, let us pray Canticle 19, the first song of Isaiah, found on page 86 of, 86 of the prayer book. Canticle 19 on page 86. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day, you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the pe people through the apostles, and they were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the rest dared to join them, but the people held them in high esteem. Yet more than ever, believers were added to the were added to the Lord. Great numbers 
both men and women so that they even carried out the sick they carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on cots and mats in order that peter's shadow might fall on some of them as he came by a great number of people would also gather from towns around jerusalem bringing the sick and those tormented tormented by unclean spirits and they were all cured then the high priest took action he and a whole all who were with him that is the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. But when the temple police went there, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, we found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them wondering what might be going on then someone arrived and announced look the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people then the captain went with the temple police and brought them but without violence for they were afraid of being stoned by the people here ends the reading Together, let us pray Canticle 19, the Song of the Redeemed, found on page 94 of the prayer book. Canticle 19 on page 94. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth, O King of all the ages. Who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Together, let us say the Apostles' Creed found on page 96 of the prayer book, followed by the Lord's Prayer. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Together, let us say Suffrages A, found on page 97 of the prayer book. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Teach your divided church, O God, so to follow the example of your servant, Isabel Florence Hapgood, 
that we might look upon one another with a holy envy to honor whatever is good and right in our separate traditions and to continually seek the unity that you desire for all your people. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who prayed that his church might be one. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Next are the prayers for the Episcopal Church of the Atonement in Chicago and beyond for the week of June 25th. You can add your own intentions either silently or aloud at home, or you can add them to the comments feed of this Google Meet broadcast, um, and I'll try to, try to read them. We pray for the healing and comfort of those for whom we now offer our prayers. We pray for the sick, for Graham, Mark, Eli, Destiny, Kay, Ron B., Jerry C., Brad, Phyllis, Mary, Killian, Rita, Dennis, Maureen, Father Bice, Mary, Tom R., Ed, Father Rosa, Susan T., former President Carter, Father Puhala, Mary, Barbara, Presiding Bishop Curry, John, Manny, Chris, Elvira, Nancy, and all with COVID-19, and Jeff having surgery today. We pray for those needing special prayers, the families of those hospitalized or in nursing homes, especially Elizabeth, for all who mourn, for all victims of gun violence, for those who are traveling, for the unemployed, and for those seeking work, for peace throughout the world, and especially for the people of Ukraine, Sudan, Ethiopia, Israel, Gaza, the West Bank, Syria, Yemen, and Myanmar, and for the work of Care for Friends and Care for Real. During this Pride Month, we continue to pray for all LGBTQI plus people. May it be a time of celebration and joy, and may we also pray for growth in understanding and respect among all people for an end to insult, contempt, intolerance, hatred, and violence. We pray for all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Kari, Anthony, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners, especially Oscar Roy, Jorge, and Mingo. We pray for members of our military services on active duty, for Andre, Ricky, Owen, Max, Celeste, and Nate. We pray for Paula, our bishop, Dan, our interim rector, Dave and Amanda, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry and search committee. We give thanksgiving this week for the birthdays of Mother Kate Gustales, Daniel Burke, Jeff Ang, Margaret Mui, Ryan Mather, Allison Tribble, Eddie Schwartz. We give thanksgiving this week for the wedding anniversaries of Mother, Mother Erica Takas and Daniel Shapiro, Jason and Andrea Chalice, Conrad and Charlene Reynolds. We give thanksgiving for the priestly ordination anniversary of Mother Erica Takas, Thanksgiving for the diaconal ordination anniversary of Father James M. Rosenthal. And we pray for the departed, for the nearly 80 migrants who died on the boat capsized in Greece, for those who died in the implosion of the Titan submersible, all who have died of gun violence, all who have died of COVID-19, and at the anniversaries of their deaths, for Bill Brogdon, Jennifer Sutton, Leston Post, Phyllis Smith, Jean Zuckerman, Lydia Coots, Chuck Powers, Larry Eugene Lee, Ronnie Don Williams, Marge Smith. And we have a prayer for the people of Ukraine. Lord of all the earth, be present with the people of Ukraine at this time of danger, fear, and conflict. Grant that wise and peaceable counsels may yet prevail and give to all suffering nations the freedom they desire and deserve. 
We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May these and all our intercessions be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Finally, we have the general thanksgiving on page 101 of the prayer book. Oh, and one more thing. For the 15-year-old boy who was shot and killed in Little Village this Sunday afternoon. Thank you, Ron. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to whom, to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. This concludes morning prayer with the Episcopal Church of the Atonement. You can join us every morning here on Google Meet um, at 8.30 a.m. every day of the week. On Tuesdays, we have evening prayer also on Google Meet. And that is at 5.30 p.m. on Tuesdays. You can get there from the Atonement website. Um, mass schedule usually is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30 a.m. But currently, Tuesday Mass is uh, suspended. Um, at Thursday, Mass is at noon. Wednesday, 6.30 p.m., there's often a Mass. There's a Healing Mass at Saturday at 10 a.m. And Sunday Masses are at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and 11 a.m., which is broadcast on YouTube. So everybody have a great week, be kind and be safe.